After the introduction about the history of the basic ideas in kinematics, let us start with the concept of the frame of reference used to study the motion of bodies in nature. The position and the change of the position, that is the motion of any material body can only be described with respect to other bodies. In this figure a moving red ball is shown, where its motion is indicated with the green arrow. This motion is observed with respect to a group of other bodies, for example a cube, a cylinder, and a sphere, where the positions of these solids do not change with respect to each other. When the ball is moving, it is changing its position compared to those of the other bodies and this motion can only be described with respect to them or to another arbitrary group of bodies. That means the motion is always relative. If we want to describe the motion of any object then we have to chose other objects as reference bodies, and compare the instantaneous position of the moving body to the positions of the reference bodies. The number of the reference objects is arbitrary, provided that they do not change their spatial positions with respect to each other. In most cases it is enough to chose only one reference object but we are talking about the general case, when more bodies are singled out as reference objects. We call this group of objects the frame of reference. In this example the group of the cube, the cylinder and the sphere was chosen as the frame of reference to describe the motion of the red ball. The frame of reference can also be the laboratory where we carry out our experiments on the motion of bodies, a vehicle moving on or in the vicinity of the earth, or the earth herself, or any system of the fixed stars in the sky. Thus the choice of using any set of objects as a frame of reference is arbitrary, but it is practical to choose such a set of objects which allows us to have the simplest possible description of the motion we study. Let us discuss the concept of the frame of reference in more detail. The frame of reference must always be given, since the same motion of a body may be completely different with respect to different frames of reference. For example, with respect to the frame of a moving bicycle its pedal is running along a circle, but with respect to the road, its motion is described with a cycloid. Here the paths or trajectories of the moving pedal are given by two completely different curves, which shows how essential a unique frame of reference is in the description of the motion. If we want to describe the position of a body with respect to a given frame of reference, then we need to define some points, lines or surfaces, that is a set of geometrical elements attached to the frame of reference. Then we can measure the distance of the these elements from the given body, which uniquely determines the location of the moving body in space with respect to the reference frame. If we attach more points to the object chosen as a frame of reference, as in this figure, then the instantaneous position of the moving ball can be uniquely determined by its distances from the points. We can also use lines oriented along the edges of the object and measure the minimal distances of the moving ball from these lines. This method gives the unique position of the ball as well. Planes can also be attached to the surface of the object. Then the minimal distances of these planes from the ball provide its unique position with respect to the object. We normally use some combination of different geometrical elements attached to the frame of the reference, and we measure the distance of the body from these elements. Now we are ready to introduce the concept of the coordinate system. The set of the geometrical elements used to determine the position of any point in space is called a coordinate system. Then the measured distances between the point and these elements are called the coordinates of the point in the given coordinate system. We can have a quantitative description of the position of a body in space if we attach a coordinate system to the frame of reference. The position of the body is uniquely determined if the number of coordinates is equal to the dimensions of the space in which we use the coordinate system. When we study the motion along a line, it is enough to apply a one-dimensional coordinate system. Such a coordinate system consists of the reference point O, called origin, and a line with orientation called x-axis, both located on the path of motion. One coordinate, called x-coordinate, is enough to determine the position of a moving body along the line, which is the distance between the position of the body and the origin O. In the case of the planar motion we need to use a two-dimensional coordinate system. For a circular motion we can attach a polar coordinate system to the center O of the circle, which we consider as the reference point. Then the position of a body moving along the circle is determined the two polar coordinates. The first one is the distance of the body from the point O, that is the radius R of the circular path. The second one is the angle phi measured between the position of the body on the circle and an arbitrary axis through the center O. The value of an arbitrary angle can be determined by distance measurement, that is measuring arc lengths along a circle with unit radius. Then we can always talk about distance measurements in a general sense. 
For spatial motions we need to apply three-dimensional coordinate systems, where three coordinates determine the position of a body in space. The most popular coordinate systems in mechanics are constructed by applying an orthogonal set of three axes. We will use three of these types of coordinate systems. The first one is the Cartesian or rectilinear coordinate system with the Cartesian coordinates x, y and z. The second one is the cylindrical coordinate system with the cylindrical coordinates rho, phi and z. The last one is the spherical polar coordinate system with the spherical polar coordinates r, theta, and phi. In all the three cases we use three coordinates, which are distances or angles describing the position of the point P with respect to the origin and the axes of the coordinate systems. We can use coordinate transformations between these coordinate systems, provided their origins coincide and their axes have the same orientation. If it is not the case, we need to apply space translations and rotations together with the coordinate transformations. Then we have a composition of the coordinate transformations and the space translations and rotations. If the coordinates of a point are given in one of these coordinate systems, then they can be transformed into the coordinates given in any of the other two coordinate systems. Therefore, they provide an equivalent description of the position of any point. If the coordinates, x, y and z of the point P are given in the Cartesian coordinate system, this coordinate transformation maps the Cartesian coordinates into the coordinates rho, phi and z of the cylindrical coordinate system. The inverse of this transformation sends the cylindrical coordinates into the Cartesian ones. We note that some curvilinear coordinate systems have a point set where the coordinates are undetermined. These points are called coordinate singularities. In the case of the cylindrical coordinate system the z-axis is undetermined for the azimuthal angle phi. This indeterminacy is indicated in the equation of the angle phi expressed as the arctangent of the ratio of coordinate x to the coordinate y. Both x and y vanish along the z-axis, and their fraction gives 0 over 0, which is undetermined. This pathological property indicates that at the singular points, the cylindrical coordinates need to be transformed into the coordinates of other well-behaving coordinate systems, for example into the rectilinear one. The Cartesian coordinates can also be transformed into the coordinates, r, theta and phi of the spherical polar coordinate system. This coordinate transformation has also an inverse which maps the spherical polar coordinates into the Cartesian ones. We can also find coordinate singularities in the spherical polar coordinate system. Such a singular point is the origin O where the coordinate, R vanishes. Then the angles theta and phi are undetermined in that point. The equations expressing the angles theta and phi as functions of the Cartesian coordinates indicate this indeterminacy, since the fractions in these equations give 0 over 0. Two other point sets of singularity are the north and the south poles of the unit sphere around the origin O, determined by theta equals 0 degrees and theta equals 180 degrees, respectively. On both poles the longitudinal angle phi is undetermined. These coordinate singularities can also be covered with the Cartesian coordinate system. There are also coordinate transformations between the spherical polar and the cylindrical coordinate systems. This transformation maps the spherical coordinates r, theta and phi into the cylindrical coordinates rho, phi and z. And its inverse transform sends the cylindrical coordinates into the spherical polar ones. Here we also need to stress that there is a clear distinction between frames of references and coordinate systems. If we pick up a frame of reference, we can attach an arbitrary number of coordinate systems to it. Here we use two of them with the same origin and orientation. Then we can apply any of the coordinate systems to determine the position of a moving body with respect to the frame of reference. We only need to use coordinate transformations between these coordinate systems to describe the position of the body in another coordinate system. But if we have more than one frames of reference, we normally attach a different coordinate system to each of them. Let us consider two frames of reference, where the second frame is moving with a constant speed in a given direction with respect to the first one. Now we can endow both of the frames with coordinate systems. In this case, we need to transform the kinematic quantities of a moving body with respect to one reference frame to those with respect to the other reference frame with space and time translations and spatial rotations, which are called Galilean transformations. Then it is not enough to use only coordinate transformations between the two coordinate systems attached to the different frames, but we also have to apply the Galilean transformations. As a result, we have composite transformations made of these two different sets of transformations, which shows that the frame of reference and the coordinate system are two different concepts.